this podcast may contain views and opinions which are those of the hosts and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of any local agency, organization, union, employee, or company, including the podcast. What's up, everybody? We are back. Welcome back, Sawas. Off your phone. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, well, Jeff, how you doing there, brother? Doing great, guys. Good to see you. Good to be back. I appreciate you having me. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's good to have Absolutely. you. That wasn't much of an introduction, but we appreciate you for coming <laughs> back. Um, Jeff Salberg is back, everybody. Um, we, we, you know, we appreciate you for coming on, taking the time to hang out with us. Um, if you didn't check out Jeff's original episode, please do. It was great, informative. Um, and I think we're back with, with some more good information for the members, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, so we're back. I'm back today to talk about the Wine Garden case, uh, which we've discussed. I think that's what George had questions about last time, right? I mean, yes. The um, so we're back to talk about it and kind of inform you guys, let you guys know, let the members know kind of what's happening. So uh, I'm sure that everyone knows what the Wine Garden rights are. I, I would say... Uh, that some don't. I mean, honestly. Yeah, I would say right? some don't. So why don't you, George, kind of. Uh, wine garden rights are basically uh, you have right to representation if you believe that you are going to be disciplined for a conversation you have with management. So it's a, a set of basic yeah. union rights um, that, you know, are derived from a case specifically, you know, which we're, we're going to kind of get into detail about today. Um, but it's your. Your right to representation. Yeah. Right? Correct. So, um, I mean, I, we can just jump right into it. So, what is the beginning? How did all this, how did the wine garden rights come about? What is the, the case, you know, that, that's, that uh, brought about the case law? Right. Okay. So, uh, the cases, the wine garden's rights stem from uh, an NLRB case that was filed against an individual named Jay Weingarten. He was a, owned his own corporation, and he had a market. I believe it's kind of uh, difficult to discern when I read the case, but in essence, here are the facts of the case. He had uh, some type of retail store that had a little food counter in it okay. uh, where they would sell food. He had an employee <laughs> who worked at the food counter who was under surveillance for suspicion of theft. Someone had accused her of stealing something, of, of not being honest and truthful in her position at the food counter, whatever that means. So one day, it's funny how these cases come. This is all about chicken nuggets, believe it or not. The rights wow. that <laughs> you guys have today stems from chicken nuggets. It's, it's crazy. Not McDonald's so, chicken Not nuggets. McDonald's not chicken nuggets. Regular chicken nuggets. So Regular chicken nuggies. this woman... Uh, paid $1 and put four chicken tenders into a box. She put them into a large box because they didn't have a small box. They had run out of small boxes. Okay. Seems silly, but when she did that and she paid the dollar and left, a, a fellow employee snitched on her and said, uh, she's stealing chicken nuggets. So she was brought into the manager's don't, don't office. Don't be a rat. Yes, don't be a rat. <laughs> don't be a rat face. Uh, yes. rat face. <laughs> Snitches don't make it in the yard. Yeah. It's, this is true. You could ask my kids two things. All three kids from when they were tiny, this is just down a rabbit hole, but you'd ask them, what are the two things we know to be true in this world? And they would say, uh, number one, uh, snitches don't make it in the yard. <laughs> and number two, if I misbehave, dad will be on me like a fat kid on a cupcake. <laughs> I figure if they know those two things in the world, the they'll be okay. Rules at the no, don't house. snitch. The and, rules. Don't snitch and don't piss that off and yeah. you'll be fine. Uh, so she gets brought in to the manager's office and she immediately asks for representation. She's, they were unionized there at this, at this uh, retail store and she asked for representation and was denied. When asked about the chicken nuggets, the tenders in the box, she said, I put them in a big box because we didn't have any small boxes. Yeah, yeah. So the perception was was that maybe she put more than four chicken tenders in there. But uh, loss prevention, when they came in and were interviewed, they confirmed that, yes, uh, the food counter 
had run out of small boxes. They only had large boxes remaining. They counted all the nuggets. They counted the nuggets. <laughs> uh, the employee who accused her of theft, the fellow employee, could not confirm how many chicken tenders, nuggets she Fucking put rabbits. in the box. So they couldn't really get her on that. Uh, and during the course of this interview and investigation, uh, she became visibly upset, started crying, broke down crying, and said, the only thing I ever get from uh, my employer from this place for free are my lunches. And so that uh, statement caused the investigation to turn a corner. Sparked another investigation. Sparked another investigation. All the while she's asking for union representation, all the while the employer is denying, the manager is denying her uh, the ability to to call her union rep and, and have them sit with her. So let's talk so, real quick about another golden rule. Shut the fuck up. Please. <laughs> if you are in an investigatory meeting, yes. and you are at your job place, yes. please, you do not need to give your manager anybody. If you, if you get arrested... You do not need to give them more information than necessary. Yes. You actually just need to shut the fuck up and allow them to give you what they have. Let them answer the questions. If they don't have the answers to the questions, then leave it Leave it as is. You don't recall is probably one of the best answers here in the Southwest. We actually, actually in the West, we have that language now. It's new Language, but you cannot be disciplined for I do not recall answer to any question. You cannot be disciplined for that. If you don't recall, you don't recall, and that's the best answer. I would agree. So, a little Absolutely. tangent, but yes. I, I had to no, go. I had no. to go. So uh, the investigation took another turn, and ultimately they found her not – there was no violations committed either, you know uh, – with any store policies, there was no crimes that had been committed. So then the manager realized that uh, either from counseling from someone else or uh, upon his own reflection that he had screwed up in not giving her, allowing her to have a union member present during this obvious investigation that he was conducting. So said to her, hey, uh, we didn't find anything about you, so you didn't do anything wrong. But don't tell anyone about this little interview either. Just let's just nice. keep this between us. Yeah. And she immediately went to her union and reported it to whomever at the uh, at the union hall, and they immediately contacted the NLRB, who filed a complaint and nice. ultimately filed the lawsuit that went through the ranks <clears throat> and was ultimately heard by the Supreme Court. <clears throat> so this is a 1975 U.S. Supreme Court case. Wow. Pretty significant at that time uh, that that established. In essence, the holding is: if you are called in by management, any type of interview, any type of accusatory investigation that's going to happen, if you, as a union member, reasonably believe that at the conclusion of the interview you can be disciplined, you can be terminated, anything remotely like that. You have an absolute right to have your union representative there with you Excellent. during that interview. So, as you so eloquently said, absolutely, you shut the fuck up and ask for a union member to be present with you. Yeah. That is a key holding. That is uh, where right all of our rights now or the rights related to that stem from chicken tenders. Crazy. <laughs> it <That's> is crazy. <laughs> so what was, and I've been kind of, thinking about this while you've been talking what was her name uh her, her name her was name? collins collins uh yes so the, is, i don't have a first name the collins rights <laughs> actually that is a very good question arguably it should be uh she was not the plaintiff in the case it was actually the labor board that filed the lawsuit oh. on her behalf okay so it, it was it wasn't necessarily about her just like part of Part of this is, it's not just about the individual union member, but it's about establishing a course of conduct with the employer. So by enforcing these rights, it keeps the employer in check. If, if we don't enforce those rights, then the employers are going to go crazy, right? Yeah. And they're going to run roughshod over members, and we don't want that. So it's, it's bigger than just the woman herself, but... 
I sure. understand what you're saying. Uh, this this case law, they're called Weingarten rights. Interestingly, he was the defendant in the case. Um, yeah, I, it should, yes, I, that's a great question. Lie. I, I, the whole time mm. I thought it was. Weingarten Wine was, was the plaintiff, the was plaintiff. the individual yeah. employee. That's no. <clears throat> uh, and, and that's, that's a great question. And you're right. Most times in cases like that, where, uh, the plaintiff is a named individual, it will be fill in the blank rights, yeah, fill yeah. in the blank Right, or case even law. if they refer to it as case law, like Collins. I know she w- wasn't the plaintiff at this time, but saying you know Collins versus we- versus Weingarten, like you you understand what you right? Know. Yes, it's just interesting that they are now the Weingarten rights the and who is <laughs> who is the, the bad company. guy? Who is yeah. the bad yeah. guy in the whole thing? It's yes. interesting. It, um, that's that's a great. So question. in essence, basically what what that affords us as union members, correct me if I'm wrong, is any time that you feel. Like a meeting could lead to any sort of discipline, whether that be termination, suspension, whether they're you know looking at you for further discipline right. potential down criminal, the road, potential entry. criminal liability. Exactly, yes. we are afforded representation. Yes, right? so you you absolutely are. But the onus is on the employee to ask request to request a union member to in, in essence invoke their rights, his or her rights to uh, representation. It is not on the employer. The employer is not obligated to advise the employee that you have those rights. So if you don't know about them, you're in trouble, right? Shame on you. Uh, And I hope that this helps members uh, to know that they do have those rights um, it's funny, it's interesting, just a side note, when I go out and meet with members and, and hand out flyers or, or do whatever, I'm amazed at how few actually know that they have a legal benefits plan. Yeah. And that's stuff that you guys negotiated for them uh, and did a tremendous job in doing so. And the benefits that they have for free is it's crazy. It's pretty, pretty crazy. It's absolutely amazing. I've used... I've mean, used you. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Stuff that I'll charge someone three or four thousand dollars for that is not a member mm-hmm. is absolutely free to you guys. So it, it is crazy, but it's about information, right? It's about knowledge and sure. information is power and knowing what to say, knowing your rights is a big thing. So I wanna distinguish like a lot of people ask me about Miranda rights, right? I've been arrested. I get phone calls, Salberg, I've been arrested for a DUI. What do I do? Da, 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 da. And I, I go through the facts real quick. And oftentimes, more times than not, the member or the person will say, but they didn't read me my Miranda rights, right? So I'll use a DUI as an example, right? When they're asking you questions, uh, first of all, and we could do this a whole nother podcast too. Uh, I can explain what to do if, if you're pulled over. <laughs> we probably Saba, should. We probably we should, should do that. Should do we those. should do absolutely. I got a video Saba's clip. This video. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. video that, that might need to go on off the wall or off the rails with <laughs> Salas Porras. But uh, we'll get to that next. Time. Yes, but interestingly, I just I don't want to overshare your story, but you went through a DUI checkpoint, yeah, and. Uh, he was completely sober. Yes, he's a good he didn't man. get a DUI. Uh, yes, no, 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 no. Went through a DUI checkpoint, and based on what he told me, uh, that particular checkpoint violated uh, several of the requirements that are necessary to have a valid DUI checkpoint, which I'll be happy to talk about uh, later so we can come back to that. But in, in a Miranda investigation, or, or Miranda rights are... They must, you must be told, right? It's, it's called a custodial investigation. It's after you're already in handcuffs. If they start asking you questions, they must, law enforcement must advise you of your Miranda rights. Um, in the Weingarten case, the employer is not obligated to tell you that what you your rights are, that you have a right to union representation. That's on you. So... You better become aware and know what your rights are. And it's just... Read your contract. <laughs> read your contract. Uh, if you have any questions, call me, call these guys. Yeah. Uh, they'll be happy to help you. So 100%. that's, in essence, what it stands for. And I want to touch a little bit and back <clears throat> up a little bit on um, 
Um, one, John and myself and George uh, as a steward, we always let management know that they have a right. And they're afforded the wine, wine garden rights. However, it is the member's responsibility or to know that as well. We push very hard on management. But I wanted to talk about a little bit of um, this whole case. The one thing that stuck out for me was there was another member that we said snitched or told on the other member. We always have these incidences where maybe members are not getting along. And this just happened the other day. And a member came up and um, wanted to file a grievance on the other member. And we tell him that's not what we do. We don't go and snitch or tell on the other member. What I want to say is if you're having uh, a misunderstanding or any type of beef with another member, come to myself or John or to your steward first and, and let us, um, you know, get with you and the other person and hopefully hash that out. We had two members um, just last week who one of the members thought he was guaranteed an amount of time to work. He was a part-timer, and the other member was a full-timer. And the full-timer came up to me and said, hey, we've been going back and forth. What I'm afraid of is when you guys do that and management hears you or somebody witnesses that or hears that and they go to management – Next thing you know, you're pulled in the office. They're asking questions. They're interviewing you guys. And then both of you end up getting terminated. Um, yeah, it's happened. It I'm happens. Sure. So do yourselves a favor. Um, if you see something or you think that something's wrong or you have a beef with another member, come to us first and let us resolve it rather than go to management. I mean, this whole thing, because a member... Went and told on another member, right. you know, gave Just us. Because she the, got a bigger box. Yeah, well, she got some chicken nuggets. But um, do us that solid because, um, one, we don't want to go against another member. And this whole thing that just happened the other night was a misunderstanding. We went and spoke to both members. We talked to the part-time member. We explained to him what his get contractual guarantee was and how the process worked. And then he shook our hands and said, I'm glad that somebody broke it down to me and was truthful about it. And right there, I, I believe it just squashed the whole thing. Now, if they wouldn't have come to us, these guys would end up fighting back and forth. Somebody would have heard. They, they both would end up in the office and maybe possibly both being disciplined or fired. So just do yourself a favor. I don't want to say... Don't be a rat face. Yeah, I don't want to <laughs> say that. But just come to us. Come to your steward. Come to your business agent. Wherever you're out there. No, I will say this. that, look, some of these uh, just. Oh, I wasn't talking. Sorry, to touch what Salvas is, <laughs> is talking about because um, he was mumbling and not really making a point. But uh -huh. just to kind of wrap that up. Says so that English teacher. But just to kind of wrap that up a little bit. But you need to get it. We need to have a chance to settle it in house between the members. Management is not there for your like, regardless of what you think of management. They're not there to help you. <laughs> No, I, the, I, mem the the stewards are, the business agents are, they actually care. Yeah. No, but I will say that it, I, I think the way we said it might sound like we don't take your safety into account. Well, it, that's not what we're saying. We definitely want you to have a safe, you know, work environment. We want you to feel safe. We want you to make sure you're okay. The reason we say, uh, you know, come to us first is because a lot of these are misunderstandings, mm -hmm. like Sawa said. Stuff, stuff can be cleared up. We can kind of clear the water. And if there is a member that's, you know, being a jackass, because there are jackasses out there, that, that's, that's a thing. Everywhere. Um, you know, we There's can have that conversation room. and kind of get to the bottom of that <laughs> and work that out. Um, you know, worst case scenario, we have to, you know, it does have to go to management or whatever. Um, but we want to have the opportunity to fix that first to protect every party involved. Both of the members that we represent, right? That's basically what we're getting yeah. to. But we do not downplay your feelings as far as, you know, if you feel unsafe or you feel like this guy wants to kill you or whatever, we definitely want to hear about it and we want to try to address it, but without somebody losing their job. Yeah, and remember, we have a legal obligation to represent both of you. And this is what I tell people. Look, I hear you. I'm not here to take sides. I understand how you feel. 
you feel unsafe, let us go and address the issue. Yeah. Because this happens a lot, believe it or not. But I, I feel, especially um, maybe the newer members that come in that don't understand <coughs> um, being in a union shop or the rights they have, um, they think going to management is the best recourse for them, and then they end up getting themselves in trouble. Right. Because then they start interviewing them, and so well, why is this guy coming after you? Well, because, you know, I gave him the bird or I told him to go fuck himself or, you know, and then they get themselves in trouble. You know right. what I mean? So that's that's what I that's what I got out of this whole case is, you know, you guys, you guys have to please um, try to come to us first. I know there's some stuff that's just super egregious that need to be addressed right away. And we've seen those instances, too. And, you know? and believe it or not, we've we've somewhat seen. Uh, the scenario with this, maybe not with chicken strips or chicken nuggets, <laughs> right. but we've seen these these instances, and we've actually talked to members and said, "Hey, dude, look, you know, we'll maybe have another report." Or we've seen it with our own eyes, where we're like, "Hey, bro, um, I, you know, just want to make sure that you know that you can get yourself fired for doing stupid shit like this, right?" And you address those things prior to anything even happening, um, which, to Savas's point. The, that guy probably should have just went to his union rep and said, hey, she took a big box. She might be taking extra chicken nuggets. I don't want her to get her in tr- trouble. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he was obviously jealous or whatever. You know, I it, it's just to further that, uh, with respect to Wayne Garden rights, you do not have, the employee does not have the right to representation if they are being interviewed as a witness. So in the example of what you guys are talking about now, yeah. however, as you said, Sabas, if all of a sudden you are being interviewed as a witness and you say something incriminating or dumb, <clears throat> it's going to be harmful to you now moving forward and that interview changes yeah. gears, then you have a right to have union representation with you, but you have to be sophisticated enough to know, uh, yeah. I just tripped on myself uh, now they're looking, now this is shift as focus to me. So don't, right. You just, you want to stay out of those situations. And in my mind, anytime they're interviewing you about a heated situation that can turn both ways, turn back on you real quick. Right. So anytime you're talking about a heated situation, even if you feel like you were the justified party and you, you were in the right Anytime management is interviewing you about that, that can turn just like that. So yes. those instances definitely need to have representation. And, and please, please do not put anything on paper. When they ask you to sit down and write a statement, do not do it. I've seen people write a statement and it turns around and it backfires on them. Do not write a statement. Please do not yeah. do that. I don't recall. I don't recall. Okay, I think that we're done here. Yeah. Best answer. So <coughs> let, let's get into who these rights apply to. Okay. So I think we did discuss a little bit, you right. know, but let's, so let's talk about it. About it's, it's only union members that these particular rights, Weingarten rights, apply to. Okay. So if you are non-union, mm-hmm. you don't have these rights. This is, these are exclusive to union members. That's, you know, I'm still a part of, I used to be a deputy sheriff in LA County and I'm still a part of that union and association. I still pay my dues monthly. I still am afforded protection by them in the event that I needed them for anything. So I am a big believer in the protection of unions and what you guys do is I think it affords employees and hardworking people uh, additional an additional level of protection that they otherwise would not have. Yeah. Makes sense? So now this is kind of a, I guess, an interesting question. How would that apply to non-union members in right-to-work states? So in right-to-work states, you know, as, as union officials, we, we have, you know, our, our buddies in Arizona, um, in New Vegas. Mex- New Mexico. New Mexico. New Mexico. Yes, New Mexico. Right? That deal I'm with licensed right out to there work, as well. Right so, to work states, right? Where absolutely. They have all the, they're supposedly have all the protections of the union, but are they entitled to this because they're technically not dues paying members? So that is a great question. 
<laughs> and I would love to answer that. Uh, I, I will break all that case law down, and I will explain to you the difference between the protections of union members and non-union members and right-to-work states because there are distinctions. Okay. They do have additional protections, uh, non-union members and right-to-work states, and I'll break all that down for you. I'd love to come back and do that. Okay. So Definitely. now we have two podcasts on the books. <laughs> one about DUIs and... Uh, I think we can knock that out in one show. We'll do one about DUIs and... and yes. uh, uh, right to work states. Absolutely, we could we'll do it in one. Do that. Yes, the DUI one might run long though, so I was going to have a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do. I'm sure there's a lot of members that have a lot of questions about that. Uh, I I think it's because, to be honest, one of the things that is what I've seen is reoccurring are DUIs. We always get yeah. phone calls about DUIs. Um, a lot of them, and we can get into it later, but. Refusing uh, oh, yeah. is a big issue. Refusing um, the uh, the test, sobriety test, and um, where that could lead them down, and how that affects their driver's license. And we deal with that stuff. And as a driver, yes. how it's going to impact them, and where if they're going to be back on the truck or they're going to be in the warehouse. Yeah. So all those things we could talk about later. But I yes. see a lot of that going on. Um, most of the phone calls we get are for DUIs. So I will just. Just on that alone, just touch on that one uh, area, refusing is, is no good, right? Because they are going to get your blood. Mm -hmm. They will do it via a warrant. So you're still going to have your blood results. The DA is going to have them. The cops are going to have them. And if you are admonished, they have to give you an admonition saying, I want to make sure I'm very clear, if you refuse a chemical test, you refuse the breathalyzer, DMV will suspend your license for one year. Yeah. You will not get a restricted license. That's that's not an option. If you get arrested for a DUI and you're convicted, and we'll talk about all this, there, there's two fights that I have. One is with DMV regarding your license. Mm -hmm. The other fight is with the court, right? But DMV controls your license on a first and a second. Then the court starts to get involved. It gets a little trickier. Mm -hmm. But if you refuse... And you think, okay, well, if I refuse, they're not going to have any evidence. Uh, I'm not taking a breathalyzer. They won't have my blood because I'm refusing. That's wrong. They will absolutely pipe you and draw your blood yeah. via a warrant, and they're still going to have it. And Strap you're going to lose. Down. Yes, they will. <laughs> and you're going to lose your license for a year automatically. There's, there's no way around that. Yeah. So let me ask you this, and I know we're kind of getting into it a little bit, but can you – can you refuse the breathalyzer and specifically ask for blood? And if so, will that also take away the refusal? Is that a refusal? And will that restrict your license for a year? No, that is not a refusal. Okay. You have the option of choosing one or the other. So a lot of people think that, uh, well, I'm going to go the blood route because longer time, longer time, right? And I'll break down how okay. it works in your BAC. But working with blood, I know a lot about this because my first job as a lawyer was defending uh, police agencies in force cases. And I did a lot of forced blood draw cases where, like you just casually mentioned, John, they're going to strap your ass down <laughs> and take your blood. And But before they strap you down, they're probably going to kick your ass a little bit yeah. or refusing and trying to get that blood flow. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Get your heart pumping. So, but the the manner in which they take your blood, the manner in which they store your blood, they right. they keep it for evidence, the manner in which they test your blood, it's called a gas chromatograph. It is it is a scientifically accepted method. So it's incredibly precise versus a breathalyzer that I can attack several things the integrity of the breathalyzer machine. itself the machine i can attack the the individual competence uh, level right. yes whether they know what they're doing um the individual officer or deputy so there's a lot more areas for me to attack with the breathalyzer versus blood but we'll talk about that about where you think your levels are when i break everything down what a coors light does to you versus 
shot of tequila, how that increases your BAC, um, the normal metabolic burn rate of an individual, the four of us just sitting around, what our average metabolic burn rate is versus if you're drinking bar and you're or drinking drinking beers and uh, out running around or playing basketball or doing something, that's going to be a different burn rate. Mm. How much you weigh, uh, what type of shape you're in, all of like that. Water I could, versus Bud Light. Right. <laughs> it's the same. Yeah, it's the same thing. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yes. So, but we can absolutely talk about all that. That's that's really good information for members oh, yeah. and people 100%. to know what to do and say when you get pulled over. I'll I'll teach you all that. Uh, good good stuff. That's where I want to go. I yes. know. I want. I want. I want to do that show right now, <laughs> Jeff. We're changing the show. Changing the show. <laughs> no, that, I think that would be a, a information packed, but a great. Uh, yes, know, a that, great that's episode. a great idea, and yes, we will we'll, we'll definitely that, do that. We'll get Jeff back on. Got a teaser now. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, for sure. I'm sure that will pique some interest in. So I was already thinking, should I, I take the breathalyzer? Because <laughs> Jeff could attack it like five different ways. Well, or I, should I wait until the burn I, rate? I, I, want, I want to make it clear again. Start I, doing I did not get a DUI. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, for everybody out there, I can already oh, hear for people all the saying, haters. My be saying, oh, so I was got a DUI. No, I drove through a DUI checkpoint yes. just recently. And um, I was asking Jeff. I always thought he was on cop audit. That's what happened. <laughs> yeah. So I exercised my rights a little bit, you know, and I, I wanted to know exactly what it is I can do and what it is I can't do because I don't want to get myself into any trouble. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I, I do want to exercise my rights. Um, that's a whole different show. But, yes. you know, I believe that if we don't exercise our rights, it's it's the same thing. If we don't exercise our language and our contract, then what's the point of them negotiating that contract for you? John and I had a conversation with some part-timers last night in the building um, where um, there was a little bit of a, I don't know what I want to call it, misunderstanding I had with the manager who was trying to throw me out of the building, Jeff, oh, and yeah. we have a legal right to be in yeah. there. But we were explaining to them, you know, that we need to enforce and exercise um, our contract. And the soups were working, and we had a good conversation. These guys were young, only been there maybe nine, ten months or something like that. Something like that. And, um, you know, we explained to them, like, these guys are taking your work, and we need to enforce that contract. So exercising your rights, it applies there and outside of work, you know? For sure. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And just like I said, just further than that, Sabas, Part of, like, the Wine Garden case is about not just the individual's protection, but also for the greater all yeah. good. Because the companies, just like law enforcement, if you do not exercise those rights, they will run right over you yeah. and take full advantage yeah. of you. Mm -hmm. So they'll do it outside. They'll do it inside. You you have to exercise knowledge, right, that, that rainbow thing, oh. the shooting star thing. Mm -hmm. They all remember us old dudes the from you know. The More You Know. Yeah. From the cartoon Everybody Saturday mornings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was the best, right? <laughs> Conjunction, <laughs> junction, what's your function? <laughs> How many of those? That. Right? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> the bill, you remember the bill? Oh, yeah. Capitol uh, Hill. Capitol Hill. Yeah. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. Uh, right? I'm just a bill. Those, those, those were the best. Yeah, they were. <laughs> I mean, they actually, you learn from that. Oh, yeah. They don't have that anymore. Uh, I'm trying to remember the one you just said. What's your function? Yeah. Conjunction. Yeah, that was a, yeah, that was a good your one. Function? Yeah, yeah. Conjunction, junction. What's your function? Hooking up words and phrases and clauses. Uh, All of those. Yeah, dude. Good <laughs> stuff. I learned how to multiply and shit. <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh, that was the time, man. I remember getting up on Saturday morning and. Eating cereal, watching yeah, that. Yeah, eating cereal, watching that. That was the five thing. Five times five is 25. Yeah. And, and then. Six. uh. That was a way that then later on, yeah. around midday, Soul Train came on. Yeah. We actually yeah, learned yeah. from TV back then. Now they watch. My kids yeah. watch. I totally TV agree. Shows, yeah. It was so much better, right? Yeah, it really kids was. will never understand that, uh, how amazing that was.
So, uh, Jeff, what, what um, services do you offer to the members? That's a great question. Thank you. Uh, we do a lot of things for the members. We handle family law cases. We handle custody cases. So dissolution, meaning if, um, unfortunately, your marriage isn't going to work out, we will take care of you. That's completely 100%. All of these benefits that I'm talking about right now are absolutely free to the members. We, we do not charge you a dime. So family law cases, I handle personally all the DUIs, any traffic. Do you guys know that if you or one of your family members uh, under 18, uh, kids under 18, 19 actually, traffic tickets, anything like that, absolutely covered. Uh, you can call me. I'll go take care of it. We handle... Any uh, landlord tenant issues? Now we they they pay us for that, but they don't pay us if you are the landlord, right? If you have a rental oh, property, oh, okay. you they pay us if you if you're the you're, if the, you're the, the tenant, tenant. Yeah, correct? Okay. Uh, so we represent a lot of tenants. If you have an issue with uh, a credit card, let's say hypothetically, or some type of dispute like that, mm -hmm. it's called a consumer transaction, whatever it is. Maybe it's a lemon law case where your car is effing up. Salas' car sucks. That's why, I, that's why I gave him the look. He should have done it a long time they ago. He sold a me a too, lemon. A little there's too a late four year, There's a four-year statute. statute for that. I should have bought a lemon. Uh, <laughs> Salas got a lemon. And he Never did anything. Okay. All right. Sure. It's his uh, lemon now. Uh, He's making lemonade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. That's a whole other show. <laughs> yes, that's a, a, a whole other podcast. Yeah. Whole other podcast. Whole other podcast. So we do things like that. Um, almost anything and everything we can take care of, and it's not just me. I'm not the jack of all trades. I've got a bunch of very smart lawyers that work with me and for nice. me, and we as a team take care of of all of these things and take care of the members. So I always say I'm your first phone call. Uh, my cell phone, 949-244-8727. We'll put that I get it. Here. Yeah. Uh, I want to be your first phone call if something bad happens. If I can't handle it with my team, then I know the best lawyer in that area of or field of law to refer you to. Okay. Um, we handle a lot of dog bite cases. Oh, wow. Uh, those come UPS to us. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, a lot of UPS drivers. Uh, there's one member that we, we just – Took very good care of him, got him a very, very good settlement. And this poor guy uh, was had a very bad bite on his neck Shit. from a pit bull. He's very Shit. lucky to be alive. It it, it got him and, and chewed up a part of his oh, jaw, man. but oh. at a little bit different area, and he could literally have died. It was it was a bad, scary oh, bite. And it messed him up for a while, and justifiably so. Um, you know, it, it, a lot of post-traumatic stress yeah. as a result of that, as as would be with anyone. Yeah. Um, so we definitely help with those car accident cases, be it in the truck or be it out of the truck. Okay. Um, and those are – that's something we do that is not covered by the union, but we do it – Differently, we give any members a deal on the percentages okay, and things like that. So, yes. Uh, like I said, if something bad happens, I want to be your first phone call to any of the members because, like I said, if I can't handle it with my team, I know the best possible lawyer in that area to send you to immediately. But it's about, it's like everything else. Like we talk about shutting the F up. Same with something. When something bad happens, you want a lawyer right now. Yeah. Uh, you need it quickly. Uh, and the, the sooner you get representation, the better off you'll be. Okay. So, I, yeah. I, you know, I, we apologize. I apologize. I don't think we went over exactly what we're referring to as, as how we got in contact with Jeff, how we, you know, how you would, you know, get with Jeff. So let's talk a little bit about the, the Western Conference uh, Teamsters Legal Fund. Okay. So if, and not all locals have it, so I'm not going to go through the list that do and that don't. Get with your business agent, your your uh, local. Figure out whether you guys are in the Western Conference Teamsters uh, Legal Fund. Um, and if you are, you you can 
go ahead and, you know, there's a list of lawyers. Jeff is one of those lawyers. Um, and uh, great, you know, we always uh, point people in Jeff's direction. But that being said, it, you know, it's, it, it gives you some legal coverage at no cost. It's something that, you, you know, the, the locals have negotiated that is paid into from the company, um, you know, and, and you have that afforded to you. So if you need things like a living trust, like divorce, yes, you know, I don't like think I mentioned that, but that's a big thing. Some of these, you know, some of these things, Jeff can do that for you. But not only if you find out, hey, I'm not in the legal trust. Jeff obviously offers, you know, discounts to members. Please hit him up. We'll put his number up there. But that's how, um, you know, all this came about. So we want to make sure that we cover that because some of you, you might not know, but you have coverage, legal coverage for no cost to yourself. Absolutely. And I didn't, I'm glad you mentioned wills and trusts. I, I can't believe I forgot that. But that is such a key, key component to have in your life uh, because we know, we know this, right? This life is short and we never know what's going to happen. And we all have tomorrow. terrible things happen in our lives and family members and friends and people that we know. Mm-hmm. And you protect yourself by having an estate plan, by having a, a will, a trust, all of those things I can do for you absolutely free. I've got a lawyer that specializes. That's all she does is do estate planning, sit and talk with you. And the questionnaire is a three page questionnaire. It's not complicated. It's not super involved. Some tough questions that you have to answer about, you know, if you have children and who's going to take care of the kids and things like that. But it's imperative that members get this. It's something I charge anywhere from three to $5,000 for, for someone off the street where you guys, all members, it's a hundred percent free. Wow, costs you awesome. nothing. So it's a no brainer. Uh, you just have to literally take the time to fill out the three page questionnaire and get it done. And we'll get it spun up back out to you in two to three weeks. Nice. So nice. Yeah. It's a good deal. It's so beneficial. Yeah. It is. So, so you're old. You might want to do that. Damn, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm-hmm. Just throw him right under the bus. <laughs> Old. He has hair though. Look, <laughs> he has hair now. Yeah. yeah. So what is that? Oh, so if he has hair, you're old. Was that? Yeah, his? I got oh, hair. What's the correlation there, John? <laughs> no, I'm saying he has hair now. He's, he looks he looks younger. He's trying to be nice because he knows what I'm going to say. <laughs> oh, <my gosh. laughs> Shade, you can't see the gray dog when it's growing out. Like, that's a cool little spot though. Yeah. yeah, it's a little white patch. A little white patch. Remember Pepe Le Pew? We're talking yeah, about cartoons. Right. There we go. That's exactly what I was telling the barber yesterday. A little uh, patch. Never mind. <laughs> we'll, we'll go there. 25 years. This is the first time I let it grow in 25 years. Wow. Uh, I would if I could. I have hair envy, brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's content. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. You can follow us on Instagram at OCST.952 or OCST.952. You can email us at OCST.000 at gmail with all your questions, comments, concerns. If you guys have questions and you want to get into contact with Jeff, you know we're going to put his number here. It's going to be in the description. You could also leave a comment or email us, and we'll, we'll get you with him. Absolutely. Thank I'll you very much for having me. I'll say thank you. Don't oh. thank us, Jeff. Yeah, we thank, thank, us. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you for coming on, for taking the time to uh, of course. spread some information to the membership. Um, you guys out there, you know, fucking – Wine garden rights. That's Damn. important. Have representation. Yes. That's why we wanted to get you know, Jeff it's on. important because you said fucking first. The next time <laughs> we, we will uh, discuss DUIs. That I'm actually looking forward to that yes. show at this point. Yes. Um, but thank you for spending the time. For, Absolutely. Uh, for coming out and visiting and hanging out with us. And uh, do it over again. Just want to give a shout out to our brother, Mike McCoy, I believe. In local 705 in Chicago. Thanks, brother, for Thank watching. You, brother. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Thank you. John? I didn't okay. Cut all that in the show, so cut all that shit out. <laughs>